What's up everybody, Nathaniel Morton here with NathanielMorton.com helping you get bigger, stronger, faster, and more explosive. Within today's video, I'm going to be doing a vertical jump q and I'm gonna be answering all of your questions on how to increase your vertical jump, jump higher, and become more explosive. Speaking of becoming more explosive, if you would like a free body weight vertical jump training program that can help you become more explosive, comment jump, letter by letter, J-U-M, down below in the comment section and I will send that over to you. Before I get into the questions, got my phone ready with the questions right here, but before I get into that, I want to give you a little update about where I've been because a lot of people have been asking. Some of you may not have even noticed that I was gone, but some people are wondering where I've been and why I have not been making videos. This is why. Number one, I didn't feel like it. Okay, I just didn't feel like it. There was a lot on my plate. It wasn't a priority for me. Number two, I've been moving into a new apartment. So I'm gonna give you a little tour really quick just so you could see what I've done. So this gym that you see behind me used to be in a different area. And I thought to myself, I want this in my house because I am so committed to doing YouTube videos and becoming a successful YouTuber that I'm gonna move it into my house so there is zero excuse for me to make videos and it is convenient for me. So let me give you a tiny little tour very quickly before we get into the video and then we'll get to answering your questions. So here's my gym behind me. Okay, this is my gym. You guys see it. We got the squat rack. We got the vertical jump platforms. We got a treadmill that actually doesn't work. Um, I tried to get on it yesterday, so I'm gonna throw that away. We got the dumbbell rack. We got the trampoline that I jump on in the morning so that I gain energy and I cleanse my cells. I'll talk about that in a different video. And here's my uh, new apartment. Okay, just moved into this new apartment. We got the mirrors up. We got it all going on. We got Arnold, Kobe, and Muhammad Ali up on the wall okay um let me show you over here first we got my boy king snug right here what's up my dog i know you a cat but you my dog okay we got the big screen 75 inch tv more importantly than the tv we got all the books that can help us become the greatest version of ourselves. okay one thing i don't like about this apartment are the floors like you might think this floor is dirty no the floor is clean it's just it's just there's paint there's marks um, yeah, the floor sucks, so maybe I'll do something about the floors. Um, over here, we got the ghost protein to make them gains. Okay, we got the kitchen over here. <clears throat> Nothing really back there. We got stairs that go up to a loft. I'm going to put um, probably like a little air mattress up there in case my buddies ever come over and they get kicked out the house by that girl. All right, um, we got the bathroom in here. Okay, I'm not gonna show you too much more. We got the bedroom, you know. I'm still in the process of moving in, so that's why everything's all scattered. What's up, dog? You got something to say? No? Okay. That's why everything's all scattered. So another thing about this place is the lighting is not very good, okay? The lighting is not very good. So I do have professional lighting that I will set up in the future. However, it is in storage right now. I will get it at some point, so bear with me. But anyways, guys, let's jump into the question. So if you're wondering where I've been, that's where I've been. I've been moving into a new apartment. I've been, I started my summer school job. I went on a bachelor party to Nashville. There's been a lot going on and videos just haven't been a priority for me, but they will be now. So I'm going to start posting one video a day um, at some point in the future, I'm going to post this video, but I'm not going to commit to one video a day right now, but I will be trying to give you guys as much value as possible. But anyways, let's stop the talking and let's answer the questions. Okay. First question from Chris Uzumaki. First of all, Chris, I appreciate you dearly. You are one of the most interactive people on my channel. I know you. Uh, you, you tell me about your progress all the time. I truly, truly appreciate you. So you have a couple questions in here today. First question, I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled and I won't be able to work out from Friday through Sunday. What should I do about the jump training workout? I'm on phase two, week three, part two of your body weight vertical jump training program that you can comment jump down below if you want it for free. Um, should I restart it 
or just keep going until I'm better to do physical activity. So um, I got my wisdom teeth pulled out when I was younger. Um, not a great experience, but part of life for some of us. Um, you're gonna be out from Friday through Sunday. Uh, that's three days, Chris, three days. Um, don't start anything over, just restart from whatever workout you were at. So if you were at phase two, week three, part two, um, don't restart that, just go to phase two, week three, part three. Okay, that's it. Next question. And for those of you, if you ever have a break in training and you're doing a training program like my vertical jump training program, my body weight, or my weight training vertical jump training program that you can get from NathanielMorton.com, guys, buy my program. I am so serious, it will help you. I'm not even shy about trying to sell you my program anymore because that is literally what I did to increase my vertical jump to the point where it is today. Okay, so um, either get the one for free or go to NathanielMorton.com. It's $50. You will literally skyrocket your vertical jump and I am not shy about asking for your money because I'm telling you, you would rather have the vertical jump training program than your money. But if you wouldn't, then don't get it and get the free one and take me for everything that I'm worth. All right, next question. Wait, I didn't answer. If you have a break in training, sorry, this is my first video in a while. If you have a break in training, if it's only three days, just continue with your training after those three days. If let's say it's a week, maybe go back and do the previous workout that you just got done with. So Chris was on phase two, week three, part two. Do that again if it's after a week. If it's after two weeks, you've taken two weeks off, you might, you might wanna start that entire week over or even the entire phase over so that you get those gains again because the phases are different. Um, but guys, life happens. Sometimes you take breaks, sometimes you fall off, sometimes you're not gonna be able to hit your workouts. Just get back to it, that's the most important thing. Okay, next question. And I'm gonna to try to speed this up because this video, I can already tell it's gonna be long. Next question from Bjorn. Hard Vendel. What is the best variant of deadlifts? Trap bar deadlifts are better than um, sumo deadlifts. We're talking about vertical jump here, okay? So there's trap bar deadlifts, there's um, uh, sumo deadlifts, and what is, the, what is the normal one? Conventional deadlifts, okay? The best deadlifts are trap bar deadlifts in a conventional stance. Okay, sumo would be the worst, and then if you have a straight bar, um, conventional is next, okay? That is, those are the best form of deadlifts. So, if that was unclear, sumo deadlifts are the worst, um, conventional deadlifts are the best if you have a straight bar, but if you can do a trap bar with um, conventional stance, that is the best, but conventional stance is the best. Next question, from geek, not geek, he ain't no geek, from Greek Gaming Spiros. Greek Gaming Spiros. Bro, I wanna ask you something apart from dunking. I was once deadlifting pretty heavy and I injured my lower back and now I have some lower back pain and I have two questions. Does that stunt my growth? And do you know any way I can get rid of that pain? Okay, so first of all, no, it's not gonna stunt your growth. No, that will not stunt your growth. Your body will heal and you will be just fine. Um, to answer your second question, any way I can get, get rid of that? So first of all, you wanna prevent that by happening by having the proper form on deadlifts. So make sure when you do your deadlifts, you are pushing with your legs instead of pulling with your back. Make sure that your chest is out, your butt is out, make sure that you, you, you need to go through a deadlift checklist. You need to learn how to deadlift properly, have good form, and, and be doing deadlifts with good form. You also need a strong core. So make sure your, your core is strong because that's gonna eliminate lower back pain. Um, any way to get rid of that? Actually, if you have lower back pain, um, you can do some stretches, but sometimes that even makes it worse. But it's actually, your glute medius needs to be stronger, if, if, we're gonna be, if we're gonna be honest. If you have low back pain, your glute medius that attaches right up like to your lower back, your, attaches your butt and your back together, you need to uh, strengthen that. So you can do mini band exercises like glute, glute bridges or 
clams or monster walks or lateral side steps. You could do the Jane Fonda leg raises, um, but you need you need to get that glute medius um, stronger, and you need to get your core stronger. Um, but I'm gonna make I'll make a video on that because that isn't a great explanation. Okay, from next question from Oron Haddad. One more question: If I train as you said for the next six months, and now I can only touch the rim, what would be my results? By the way, I'm 15 years old, five foot eleven. Okay, let me break this down. If I train as you said for the next six months, so what I probably told you to do was weight training twice a week with two days of rest in between. Um, if you want to add a third day. Um, you could do plyometrics or you're doing basketball and you can play basketball anytime that you want. You're stretching and foam rolling every single day. That's what I probably tell you to do. That's what I recommend for everybody to do. So if you're 15, you're five foot 11, you can only touch the rim right now. What would be your results in six months? In six months, you could easily be dunking. If you're really training hard, if you're doing the right training, it's six months, you could you could go from just touching the rim to dunking a ball with two hands, okay? So you could easily increase it six inches, maybe even a little more, okay? Um, so there you go, next question. From Peter Mo. Does playing basketball at high levels with lots of running and dunks count as plyometrics? Yes, next question. From Gilda Balbuena, can I substitute basketball in my plyometrics training and do two times a week weight training? Yes, so um, if you're doing a lot of basketball, the two of the best types of plyometrics are sprinting and max vertical jumps. Okay, so if you're dunking a basketball, if you're playing, if you're going jumping as high as you can for rebounds, you're sprinting up and down the court, those are plyometrics. Those are helping you increase your vertical jump. And then two times a week for weight training, yes, that's perfect. So yes, you could substitute that. Maybe add in one day of plyometrics. Um, but yes, absolutely. Next question from Karthik Sarah. Nate, whenever I squat heavy, the bar digs into my shoulder and causes me pain. What should I do? Man, you need to get some bigger traps. You need to hit your shrugs. You need to hit your upright rows. Um, you need to get some bigger traps so you get some meat on the back of your shoulders so that that doesn't happen. And you sit the bar on that, set the bar on the meat, and you'll be good. Um, or wear a hoodie can also, man, don't be one of the people to go in the gym and strap that little donut thing, the little pad around the bar. Don't be that guy. Actually, be that guy because who cares what people think? But yeah, wear a hoodie, strap the noodle, strap the thing around the bar, um, and man, man, get, get some meat on your neck, okay? <laughs> get some, go, do some shoulder exercises, do some shrugs, do some upright rows, and gain some muscle. Anyways, next question from Luca Z. Are you still doing push-ups and pull-ups? <sighs> I'm about to get exposed. Are you still doing push-ups and pull-ups six days a week, my man? I want to start doing this, so I'm interested in your progress. This is a goal that I set for myself at the beginning of the year to do push-ups and pull-ups every single day or six days a week, because I would take one day rest. No, I am not doing that anymore. I am a fraud, okay, I'm actually not a fraud. I just, <sighs> I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it, and I'm trying to ask myself whether I actually didn't enjoy it, or whether I'm just a punk, and I just punked out of that goal, which, I'm, I'm afraid to say I think it is the second one. I think that I, I just punked out. It was hard. It's hard to do push-ups and pull-ups every single day. For those of you who don't know what I did every day, I did, I alternated on Monday. I would do three sets to failure push-ups, three sets to failure pull-ups, as many as I could do, three sets of that. On the next day, I would do six sets of half of my failure number. So let's say I failed at 50 push-ups. I would do six sets of 25 push-ups. Let's say I failed at 15 pull-ups. I would do six sets of eight pull-ups because I rounded that up. And I would switch that back and forth, Monday and then Tuesday. And then 
I would rotate and then Sunday I would take a rest. It was hard. It was so hard mentally. Like, and by the way, I have now gotten back into doing push-ups and pull-ups, but I took like a three month break, okay? I did it for about two two months, three months. Then I took a three month break where I didn't do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say it was just extremely hard. It was mentally fatiguing. I would wake up every day like, oh my gosh, I have to do my workout today and I have to do my stretches today and I have to do my knee exercises today. Oh, and then I gotta do push-ups and pull-ups every day, but I, I'm just making excuses. If somebody had a gun to my head and said, do it every day or you die, I would do it. But no, I don't continue. Why am I taking so long on these answers? Next one. From the next Hank Aaron, I hope you are. I hope you hit all the home runs. I hope you practice baseball, deep practice on a daily basis. I hope you are the next Hank Aaron. Can 100 calf raises a day increase my vert? Yes. Um, but eventually you're going to get to a point where you plateau and that no longer increases your vertical. What I would do is work on your posterior chain. You need to increase not only the strength and explosiveness of your calves, but of your hamstrings, your quads, your glutes, your posterior chain, your core. So yes, but do more. Next question from Kathleen Hope Romance and Erotica Audiobook. Nice name. I have a question about progressive overload. I just started training my vertical jump. I am doing weighted jump exercises two times a week. How often should I be increasing the weight or the reps every new training day, every week, every month? Thanks. Well, Kathleen Hope Romance in Erotica audiobook, you should be progressive o overloading every single time that you go into the gym and train. And you don't have to increase it by much. You can simply add one rep to one exercise, and that is progressive overload. You can add one rep to every exercise, and that would be progressive overload. You could add 2.5 pounds to the bar on each side, and that would be pro progressive overload. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but imagine if you put 2.5 pounds on the bar on each side every single time after 10 workout sessions, you have now added 50 pounds to the bar. Get it, 2.5 on each side, that's five pounds times 10 sessions. That's 50 pounds added in 10 workout sessions. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot. Progressive overload every single time. Every single time. Don't wait a month, don't wait a week, every time. Thank you. Okay, that's a long one. But it's from my boy Chris Uzumaki once again. So irritating when I can't even touch the smaller rim. A day after doing phase four and playing volleyball, Nathaniel, how do you handle defeat? That feeling when you aren't jumping high and you know that you can jump higher, that feeling of being weak after that failure, what do you tell yourself? What do you do? Every time I fail, I get back up and there are times where I question, is this worth it? And my immediate response is yes. It's a struggle, but it's worth it. How do I keep myself going? What do you say to yourself? I know results will never be immediate, but while waiting for them and while failing, what do I do? I will fail 100 times in order to have one success, but what do I do when failing? Chris, I wouldn't really call that a failure. I say that our definition of failing is different. I say that you have to understand that if you are jumping up and trying to touch the smaller rim at your gym, I am guessing, and you can't touch it some days, that is because your muscles in your central nervous system are fatigued and they are not, tr they are not sending the nerve signals to your brain fast enough or strong enough for you to jump up and do that. It just happens. It happens to me too. It happens to everybody. Some days you can jump higher than others because some days your central nervous system is just fatigued. Okay, so what do I do when failing? Number one, I, I, you have to understand that that is part of it and after the failure comes success. If your central nervous system and your muscles are fatigued, that means that you did training that stimulated your muscles and your, your nervous system enough for them to get fatigued so that they are going to be forced to grow back bigger and stronger and more explosive so that you, you're gonna come out on the other side jumping higher. 
Okay, so that's a good thing. Every time that you jump up and you can't touch the rim, you're like, wow, I must have fucked myself up in the last workout. I'm about to make some gains. Okay, I'm getting the chills right now because listen, for everybody out there, when you fail, especially talking about vertical jump, when you can't jump up and touch the rim, it's because you have done a workout that crushed you to the point where it's going to force your body and your muscles and your nervous system to grow back bigger and stronger. Therefore, you will jump higher. So, Chris, do not worry about it. Okay? Don't worry about it. Keep going. Keep reminding your, yourself that you are going to get there. It's all a process and that you, you've done something good. Okay? But other things that you can do, you need to, what I would do is I would vision, you got to get your thoughts right. Your thoughts. Okay? Everything stems from thought. Um, so I would close my eyes and I would visualize myself jumping higher. I would visualize the person that I want to become on the other side. I would meditate. A lot of you, prob you're younger, you're probably not into meditation. If I'm ever negative with myself, I go in the bedroom and I meditate, okay? I control my breathing. I get into that parasympathetic state. I start thinking about the person that I want to become and it completely changes my thoughts. And then I think about, do I have the right strategy? Do I have the right strategy? If I do, then let me just continue on this path, realize that it's all part of the process, or if I have the wrong strategy, what is the correct strategy? All the, if, if all that I have to do is make one little tweak and change my strategy, maybe do a little bit less work, maybe do a little bit more work, maybe do different work, then I'm gonna change my strategy and move on. But listen, Chris, you're on the right track. If you fatigued yourself enough to get to that point, you probably done a workout that got you there and you're gonna grow stronger on the other side. Next question. From Don Aceman, can you increase your vertical jump more than three inches in two months? I'm actually gonna do a separate video on this because I have a secret workout for you guys that you're going to want to do that will help you increase your vertical more than three inches in two months. But for now, the answer is yes, you can. Um, next question. From skies to sunset rise. Hey, Mr. Morton, question for the next Q&A. If you have a slow metabolism and gain fat fast, but can't burn it or lose it fast, which would be the best, fastest way to burn fat fast so that you can slim down quick so that vertical training and explosive training is more effective? Thank you so much. So basically you're saying if you have a slow metabolism, then how, what's the best way to burn fat fast? Okay, so if you have a slow metabolism, you want to work on getting a quicker metabolism. The way that you can gain a quicker metabolism, number one, you need to be drinking a lot of water. Make sure that you're drinking a gallon of water a day. You can even squeeze a fre fresh lemon into it. Lemon water detoxes the system um, and that can help you you that can help you boost your metabolism. Number two, you gotta be walking, okay? If you don't move a lot, your metabolism isn't going to be that fast. Um, so I would wake up in the morning, I would just walk a mile or even run a mile, okay? Drink some water, go walk or run a mile. Um, be more active. Um, what would I do? Let me think about what I would personally do if that were my case. You definitely gotta get your nutrition in check. You definitely, if you're eating badly at all, like metabolism, like we have to take it down to a cellular level. Are you optimizing your cells? Are you optimizing your body at a cellular level? Chances are probably not. You might not be eating the best. So for nutrition, make sure that you're eating vegetables. I wouldn't, if I, I wouldn't even eat any carbohydrates except vegetables. No carbs except veggies. Okay, seriously, that's what I would do. Fruit and veggies, fruit and veggies. Um, and then I would make sure I'm getting lean sources of protein. I would make sure that I'm eating healthy, unsaturated fats like nuts, almonds, walnuts, um, peanut butter, almond butter, avocado, okay, healthy oils, things like that. And then, after all those boxes are checked, then I would start doing HIIT cardio, high intensity interval training. I would go to a track and I would sprint the long end of the track and then I would walk the curves. Sprint the long end, walk the curves. Sprint the long end, walk the curves. I'd do that four times and then I would leave and I would do that two to three times per week. 
Um, I would do weight training. I would, um, but hit cardio is really your answer. So after the water, gallon of water a day, after walking and being more active, after your nutrition is in check, I would do hit cardio, high intensity interval training, and that would be the most effective. <sighs> oh, that's actually the last question. All right, guys. So. I'm going to leave you. I'm sorry that I took so long on this vertical jump Q&A, uh, but this has been a vertical jump Q&A where I answer all of your questions on how to get a higher vertical jump, how to increase your vertical, become more explosive. If you would like your question answered in the next video, then leave it down below in the comment section and I will be sure to answer it next time. Also comment jump down below if you want a free vertical jump training program or go to my website and buy my program. I am serious, it will really help you. It is exactly what I did. If you want a weight training, vertical jump training program, follow me on Instagram because I am now more active on Instagram. I will put my Instagram tag up on the screen right now. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell so that you never miss a video. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, take action because action is everything. Knowledge is not power, it is only potential power until you take action on what you know. Meaning that if you just take all the information that I gave you and you just keep it up in your head but you never do anything, you will not see any results. However, if you take the knowledge that I just gave you on this video to the gym with you, you apply it for yourself and you actually do it, you execute on the knowledge, take action on the knowledge, then you will see all of the results. I will see you guys in the next video.